and power. I'm Shireen Elfet. In today's program, a sticky situation. We look at trouble for Firestone on Liberia's rubber plantations. And from picking to clicking, how India's poor farmers are logging into a world of information. We begin with Liberia. This West African state is trying to rebuild after 14 years of bloody civil war. But it's not easy, what with rampant unemployment, poverty, crime and lingering conflict. Liberia does, however, have natural resources to help it bounce back. Among those is rubber. Unfortunately, there are plenty of problems on the plantations, including those owned by Firestone, Liberia's biggest employer. The company is accused of low wages and poor working conditions, charges which Firestone contests. People in Power's Juliana Rufus visited Firestone's operations in Liberia and tapped into the workers' concerns. It is 4.30 in the morning. A group of rubber tappers on the Firestone Plantation in Liberia are setting off to work. They're starting to tap under cover of darkness because one of them is going to be putting his children to work for the first couple of hours. He'll be fired if caught. Firestone has become extremely sensitive to the issue of child labor since a lawsuit was filed against it in 2005, which accuses it of slave-like conditions on the plantation. We discover um, that indeed um, Fasson was in, engaged in slave type labor and child labor on the plantation. And I, into my mind, I think I said that is unacceptable. Given that we have come from a slave past, it makes no sense to allow a multinational giant to be involved with, with slave type labor on our plantations. At the core of the lawsuit is the tapper's daily workload. Saturday Collie shows us how it works. First of all, each morning, a tapper has to tap on average 600 trees. Then he has to go back to the 600 trees he tapped the previous day and collect from each one of them the cup lump, the remnants of latex that have congealed overnight. After that, he returns to each of the 600 trees he tapped in the morning and collects the fresh latex from them. All this has to be done between dawn and 2 p.m., which is when Firestone collects the latex. Tappers say the only way they can do all this is by getting their families to help as unpaid laborers. Your hands, can I have a look? Your nails, Yeah. is that because of the rubber? Yeah, the rubber. The rubber is thin. So when you DC get your hand, you spoil your finger. Alfred Brunel's law firm is at the head of the campaign and lawsuit against Firestone. The conditions on the plantation first came to his attention when he was investigating pollution from the company's rubber processing plant. The whole issue with Firestone already started from this point. Uh, uh, many, many years ago, um, there was a big uh, fishing village. They would come here and they would fish and they would catch a lot of fish. But now they can't even do that anymore. And all of the, um, uh, the aquatic life that existed here, you can find them all along the shore. Like, well, this tells you exactly what we are talking about. So what's actually coming out of that? Um, that's where they process the rubber and the latex is being processed. And add, um, they added a number of chemicals that we have been told to process the latex. And all of that is left in it and is dumped straight into the river. It isn't long before Firestone security guards are on their mobile phones. When we return to the other side of the river, we get a visit from Rufus Carmel, Firestone's manager of public affairs. My brother, this is 80 years. And what we see here is unacceptable. We've got to do more than this for what we see. We don't want nobody to do no kind of cosmetic changes. It's unacceptable. Rufus is keen to counter Alfred's accusations of slave-like living and working conditions. He takes us around the one million acres the plantation covers to show us the improvements Firestone has started making. You see all these little makeshift that's on it. There's an addendum, but um, that's history. But this gives you an opportunity to compare and contrast. Mm -hmm. Like you see the first four over there, families have moved in. Just one, two, three, four units down there. Junior high school. Junior high school. Mm -hmm. 
for every time I come, there's some level of development. When I was here, the wires were not here. The soccer pitch, the poles were not there. So for every time we come here, there is a linear progression of some level of socio-economic development. In Division 25, Alfred shows us the flip side to the official tour. The rubber tappers here set up a private school because the closest Firestone school is an hour's walk away. This is a chair. And I just want to show you the seat this chair sits on. This is a place that every day Firestone come and collect latex. She's fully aware. Every day her management pass through in and out to see the school. The highest amount of education that a child gets from here is a ninth grade education, and that is sufficient for Firestone because that education allows them to be able to record the amount of letters they have on a daily basis, and that's all Firestone needs. And so they remain here and they top. <laughs>